Father, we, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this week that's, Lord, that you have given us, Lord. We thank you that, um, Lord, time is such a Lord, precious resource, a wonderful gift that you give each one of us. And, uh, Lord, we we ask, oh, Father God, that we will be mindful of it, Lord. And uh, even as your word says, uh, walk circumspectly, redeeming the time. Lord, I pray that each one of us, God, be aware of it and, uh, Lord, walk in wisdom. Lord, walk uh, with focus and uh, and not be easily distracted from what you've uh, called us to do, Lord. Father God, we, we just commit each one of us into your mighty hands. I pray that you would, uh, Lord, speak to us. I pray that you would stir up, Lord, the gifts within us, the call, Father God. And also, uh, I just pray especially for those of us who are... Uh, um, Lord, who are still asking those questions, Lord, um, what they should be doing and when and and so on, Lord. I just pray that, um, Father God, even as they are at the crossroads, Master, I pray that you would speak, that you would confirm the things that you've already put in their hearts. And I also pray, God, for especially for those, Lord, who, whom you've given, Lord, childhood dreams. And, uh, God, I pray, let there be, a, a, Lord, a, a stirring up. Uh, resurgence of that, God, especially um, if those dreams have been put away, if those things have been dormant because of, uh, Lord, responsibilities or cares or, or uh, worries or, Lord, um, even the weights, oh God, uh, of the world, God. I just pray that um, let there be clarity, let there be a resurgence, a resurrection of those dreams, Father God. Um, we thank you. We thank you for this time. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, welcome again to uh, the ministry of the evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Right, so last class, we looked at um, the, the ministry uh, of the evangelist and how the Lord Jesus is our example for it. Right? And how did he function as an evangelist? So we looked at several uh, several things. Um, so we looked at how he was empowered by the Holy Spirit even before he started uh, the work of ministry. And uh, Luke four eighteen, especially you know he uh, the Lord uh, reading from the book scroll from the book of Isaiah and declaring in the synagogue that uh, you know the. Uh, reading it and then saying today this is fulfilled in your hearing okay so what did he read verse 18 the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed so uh, he literally listed out his uh, mission statement and went on to um, and went on to do it right so he was empowered uh, by the holy spirit anointed empowered filled by the holy spirit and then he went on to uh, share the message to varied audiences and um, varied audience and also um, we looked at the kind of the method that he employed uh, in terms of teaching, in terms of demonstration, and how he went geographically from one area to another, and how he was so passionate to share the, the message of the kingdom, and also uh, the challenges um, he faced. So knowing fully well that when the Lord faced challenges, we will too, uh, in our ministries, and also the kind of support that he um, you know, received and uh, and what is really established for us uh, you know as minister minister as a kind of model that is established for us right so today um we're going to look at we're going to continue uh, and if you're following the notes we are looking at page nine chapter three and uh, we're looking at uh, the evangelists and how did uh, who were the evangelists in the early church and how do they function how do they minister and so on so we look at a, a, a couple of terms before we start uh, going into that okay, uh, uh, a couple of uh, i mean at least uh, three greek words the first one is the word euangelion okay euangelion which means a bearer of good tidings okay euangelion a bearer of good tidings. It's talking about the, the person, one who's carrying or the, one who's bearing the good news. And, and uh, of course, it's about the person. And uh, this word is used uh, 50, uh, 50 times in the New Testament. So we see it uh, occurring uh, over and over again, right? 
And uh, another Greek word is euogolidso. Um, uh, there is a, a spelling mistake here. It should be u uh, o double g e l i k e l i z o euogolidso, uh, which means to preach. So it's the verb. It's the act. So the first word talked about um, the one who carried the good news. The other one says euogolidso, uh, which means to preach, to to actually convey. The, the gospel. Okay, so that is used um, 77 times. Um, I don't have the references, uh, but we can we can get that uh, later. So we see that uh, one, it's it's a, uh, the, it talks about the person. The other one, it talks about the act. And in both, the good tidings or glad tidings uh, is uh, are mentioned, which is the gospel. Okay, so, um, so we can say, we can infer that the, this ministry, uh, which is the ministry of the evangelist, is uh, about the person who bears good news, who carries good news, and who, who preaches the gospel, which is the good news, right? Um, so uh, another word that we see is euogalistus, which is the title evangelist. Okay? Um, so this word is used thrice in the New Testament. Eugalistus. Okay, this Greek word is used thrice. First one, first time in um, Acts uh, 21 and verse 8, um, where we see Philip referred to as the evangelist. Okay, so um, tw Acts 21 and verse 8, maybe we can turn there um, and look at that uh, verse. So this is Philip who was one of the seven who was chosen to take care of the administrative duty of uh, of distribution of food to the widows and um, so we see that uh, he is mentioned uh, you know we see him mentioned in acts chapter 6 and then acts chapter 8 and also here we see in acts chapter 21 and verse 8 um, let me read so on the next day we who were with paul companion we who were paul's companions departed and came to caesarea and entered the house of philip the evangelist who was one of the seven and stayed with him and it talks about his daughters who were who prophesied so we see philip mentioned here so, and philip is described as the the evangelist the eugalistus the title evangelist and that same word is also mentioned in ephesians 4 ephesians 4 verse 11 is where we see the uh, f uh, the fivefold ministry gifts being mentioned, right? Um, efficient, and then that's where we started this whole course, looking at that um, the, the the scripture which referred to the ministry gifts and why the ministry gifts were there and so on. So in Ephesians 4 verse 11, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, and the same word is used there. Right. And the and the third time we see uh, it is used in is in Paul's uh, episode Timothy. So that's in uh, Second Timothy, and uh, Paul is writing some uh, instructions there, and he tells Timothy, "Do the work of an evangelist." And so we see that word used there. So Second Timothy chapter uh, four and verse five. Uh, but you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work. Of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Okay, so this is the third time this um, this word is used. So uh, for us, uh, just for us to understand that an evangelist is a person who who preaches the gospel, who is a bearer of good tidings, good news. Why is it good news? Obviously, it's it's good news because your destiny is changed from that of uh, your everlasting condemnation to you know eternal condemnation to eternal life. Your present is changed, your future is changed, and uh, your past is you know uh, past is forgiven, and uh, your future is rewritten. You know the entire narrative or the script is rewritten, and we have new life and we are new creation, and and so much so much can be said. Uh, about uh, why the gospel is the good news, right? So, um, so uh, before that, I, I know you you have the subject, um, the course, lifestyle evangelism, and and you know you're going into the details of what is the gospel and how sharing the gospel and, and so on. So for us to understand, uh, you know, we didn't have a clear idea about what is the gospel, right? Um, so the good the good news is about the the life that the the fact that Jesus came 
to the earth that God, in fact, John 3, 16, that God sent Jesus, God so loved the world, God sent Jesus that uh, he came, he carried the sin of the world upon himself. He died, he was buried, and uh, he was made alive. And uh, now we don't have to carry sin anymore. The, the, the sin was broken. Uh, Satan was defeated, and uh, we have the we have received the full benefits of the finished work of the cross. Now, uh, um, another way to you know just to look at, but uh, we see that that is uh, that is really the gospel, right? That in essence is the gospel, and so uh, uh, evangelist and evangelist is a person who carries that, who shares that, right? Um, if we look at um, uh, the New Testament, if we look at the gospel, uh, then we see that, yes, the disciples of the Lord Jesus were probably the earliest of the evangelists, right? Uh, during the earthly ministry of the Lord, he he called some to be his disciples, uh, to be his inner circle. And he the reason is that they might be with him, they might follow him, they might be around him, and that he would send them out Okay. Uh, it's interesting to see that uh, order, but both are mentioned uh, in Scripture, right? That they might be with him, right? not just be around him, not just hear his uh, teachings, and not just be around Jesus or go go with Jesus, you know, not just go from meeting to meeting and uh, and listen to wonderful messages and look at the wonderful things that that he was doing and uh, and be overwhelmed by it and say wow but also uh, that he would send them out to do the very same things right so um, so that's important now we see here in mark chapter 3 and verses 14 and 15 okay mark 3 14 and 15 if you have your notes um or do not you can just look at the chat mark chapter 3 verses 14 and 15 uh, let me read and he appointed 12 referring to the lord jesus that they might be with him and that he might send them out and he goes on to say what he's sending out sending them out to do and you see that is the, the very thing that he did right and the very thing that he was doing okay so the evangelist uh, is doing the very thing that the Lord Jesus did or is doing, right? Um, so, uh, I mean, it's it's an awesome privilege. It's uh, it's also you know if there has anyone anyone has any doubts about okay what should an evangelist do? This is the thing that it's the ministry of the Lord Jesus, right? What is it? Uh, verse fifteen, um, sorry, verse fourteen, that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. So we see the preaching uh, of the good news being mentioned there. We see the demonstration of the power of God in healing the body and minds of people. Here, of course, it's specifically you know talking about healing. And then it also talks about um, you know things of a spiritual nature, bondage of a spiritual nature. So it talks about deliverance, right? To cast out demons. Demons who were oppressing, demons who were um, uh, creating all kinds of problems and challenges for um, for the believer or for the unbeliever, right? To do that, okay. So Luke chapter nine here. I mean, it 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 talks about the same thing. So Luke also records for us uh, Luke chapter nine one one to six. Um, then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said to them, take nothing for the journey, neither staffs and other instructions, right? About uh, what to take and what not to take and uh, where to go, how long to stay, etc. Okay, so they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. So the instruction here uh, is, uh, is calling the twelve. Uh, is, this is obviously after he had called them and they, had, they were with him. Now he's sending them out and he gave them something. Right? He gave them power and authority. He gave them power and, uh, and authority. He gave them dunamis and exousia. You know, that's those are the Greek two Greek words used there. Dunamis and exousia. Dunamis meaning the the raw power. You know, the supernatural power, the uh, power of God. 
um, or the miraculous um, or miracle working power, right? Transformative power. Now he gave them power and he also gave them something, authority, right? Exousia, delegated authority, right? Not just power, but, but the authority of going in my name. Right, um, and uh, and and the, uh, he gave them that the permission, the privilege, the authority to. Uh, it, it also means influence, and so on. So um, he gave them the exousia and the dunamis over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out. Um, verse two. He sent them to preach the gospel of the kingdom and to heal the sick. Okay, so this is what the disciples, so we see the, um, even during the earthly ministry, the disciples uh, of the Lord were going and ministering in these in this manner. Right? Uh, let's look at Luke chapter 10. Okay, Luke chapter 10, uh, we see, uh, uh, again, Luke recording for us, and this is a bigger group, okay, uh, after these things, verse 1, Luke. 10 verse 1, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and the place where he himself was about to go. Um, verse 8, whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. Uh, verse 9, and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Okay, uh, so obviously this was before the cross. So this is the message. The kingdom of God has come near to you. And then we look at verse 17. Um, uh, and then, of course, uh, 10, uh, Luke, Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 uh, is, you know, something that we go to over and over again. Let's read from 17. Then the 70, 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Even the demons are subject to us in your name. So that is their testimony as they, uh, they you know they return after being sent out okay? after their mission or ministry trip they come back and and this is the testimony even the demons are subject to us in your name so they were able to see firsthand the uh, dunamis and the exousia working in their lives which the lord had you know bestowed or given to them right they returned with joy and the Lord, this is how he responded. He said, uh, I was 18. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority again to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I give you the authority, the exousia to trample on uh, serpents and scorpions. Let me just uh, quickly check um, if it's the same words, um, exousia and uh, uh, dunamis. Right. So we're looking at Luke chapter 10 and uh, verse 19. Okay. Um, just... Okay. Um, yeah. Exousia and and dunamis, right? So you see the same words used there uh, again. Okay, let's, uh, yeah. So this is um, uh, this is what, so we can say the, the early ministry. So we, we see something here, you know, they go with the good news and the good news was the kingdom of God, you know, the rule and reign of God is very near now. Now you're going to experience that. And, uh, and, and, and all that he taught them, they went and preached. And uh, so we see here that, uh, not only did they preach, they also ministered uh, from uh, ministered in the power that he uh, he gave them, and um, there was also deliverance that was following, and people's lives people were set free, right? Because the demons were obviously leaving um, the bodies of people, and uh, there was much uh, you know much re much rejo rejoicing, obviously. Okay, so um, so we see this. Then we. Uh, you know, then uh, another thing that we see, well, not in the nature of preaching and teaching, but also uh, in terms of uh, communicating. Okay, I don't know if we we, we can't technically say okay they were uh, evangelists, um, you know, but we see that the uh, after the resurrection of the Lord, he also you know sent them with the message. Right. He also sent um, the women who had come to visit the visit, visit the tomb. He sent them with a message. So we see this in Matthew twenty-eight 
and uh, uh, well, uh, there are two encounters: one with the angels and uh, Matthew. So that's twenty-eight, and then we see um, verse eight, and then also um, eight, eight, probably eight, and um, we'll go down to verse ten, and also. I think that's so. Um, Twenty-eight was eight. Um, so they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. Okay, so um, uh, this is after the encounter uh, at the tomb, and the angels were there, and they um, and they answered and said to the women, "Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, and so on." All right. So they go there, and uh, um, this is what this is the instruction. In verse 7, we see, you know, he's going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly, great fear, fear and great joy, and ran to bring his disciples' word. So as they went to tell his disciples, they have an encounter with the Lord again. Lord, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. And the Lord and the, and the Lord Jesus, you know, this is what he says. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and they, they will see me. So we see, uh, you know, the Lord commissioning them with the message of the, the resurrection. Right? Go and tell them, go and tell my brethren. Um, uh, and then we see that in uh, Mark's gospel as well, Mark chapter 16, and um, where uh, he, um, uh, they were sent, uh, you know, Mark chapter 16 and verse, uh, uh, verse 9 onwards, right? Um, now when they, when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they moaned and wept. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe, right, and uh, and so on. So we see that um, uh, the, the women who were at the tomb, they, they go and they share, um, uh, and we read several accounts where, uh, and we read uh, you know, Gospel uh, Luke as well, and we see the same thing um, uh, being recorded. So they went and they were sent uh, with the news of resurrection. Of course, the response was negative. They did not believe, and uh, but, Nevertheless, they were, you know, they were sent with this message. So we see that, right? Um, then we um, move on to um, the book of Acts, and we see several people who uh, would travel, who would go out with the message, okay, of the gospel, right? Um, okay, just before we go there, I just want uh, uh, for us to, you know, um, uh, again. You know, for us to get a grasp of uh, why we are looking at this, um, uh, uh, the, the importance of knowing, you know, the distinctions, um, so that uh, we don't elevate one and uh, you know put down another. In the sense, the ministry gift itself, right? Um, now, if you look at First Corinthians and um, chapter chapter three. Okay, First Corinthians chapter three and um, verse four. Okay, three and verse four onwards. Um, let me just read this. Three and verse four. For when, um, okay, let me just read uh, verse three. For you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife. And divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when for when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Okay. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then he neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. 
and then he gives um, he tells them about who they are and who he who he is as a minister of God. And so, so it's very interesting that um, Paul uh, the the problem in the Corinthian church that we see a very gifted church, a very um, a church that was flowing in the gifts. Problem was a carnality which was brought about by division which again was brought about because of comparison and elevating one person or one minister uh, more or higher than the other one. Okay, you see, so so in other words, they were, they were looking at the planting and they were saying, hey, the watering looks interesting, right? Uh, I think the watering is more important than the planting. Some were saying, no, the planting, if not for the planting, you know, planting, what is the, where is the watering? Uh, and, and, you know, arguments of that nature and, and comparison of the ministers themselves, you know, Paul, um, they would say, uh, in Second Corinthians, you read, they would say, you know, Paul, they say that his letters are weighty, but, you know, in, in his speech is contemptible and, uh, and his physical appearance is not much to look at. And, and uh, if you read about Apollos in, in the book of Acts, you see that, uh, well, he was a man mighty in scriptures. He, he, uh, he was very eloquent and uh, he refuted the claim, uh, and he refuted uh, whatever uh, opposition that, that was there uh, about uh, the, the truth. Uh, he refuted from the scriptures, and he was a, a very powerful ministry. Right? Um, so obviously, they looked at this, and uh, they were drawing their own conclusions. You know, what kind of ministry is good, and what kind of ministry is, um, you, you know, is superior, and so on. But here we see Paul, you know, categorically stating something, and and the the, the bigger picture. He says, you know. There is, yes, there is planting, yes, there is watering, but everything is interdependent. And you must understand that it is God who gives the increase. Right? There is planting, there is watering, but it's God who ultimately gives the increase. And he also goes on to say, you know, who is Paul? Who is Apollos? But, um, but ministers through whom you believed, and then he goes on to say, each one, you know, if you if you look at verse 8, 3 and verse 8, he who plants, he who waters are one, meaning they are one team. So there is no question of division. There is no question of put comparison. There is no question of comparing and saying, okay, this is better or that is better. But it's because it's the Lord who gives Right, it's a Lord who places. So, uh, so there's no question of comparison. There's no question of uh, putting down one and elevating another. But saying here that you know um, both are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Now, each is placed there to labor uh, in the kingdom of God. Um, and to, to you know, uh, as with the capacity, as with the ability, as with the, um, you know, the gifts and everything that God, uh, the anointing that comes with it, and each one will receive his own reward. So even in that aspect uh, of fruitfulness and reward and so on, the Lord will take care of that. So it doesn't have to come from man. Okay. So so the thing is this that. Um, Many times we we sometimes compare, right? Many times we compare and say, okay, uh, you know, but probably we are drawn to the apostolic ministry. Maybe we are drawn to the evangelistic. Maybe we find that, hey, this pastoral, you know, you're one stuck in one place, you know, uh, not doing much, uh, same phases every Sunday. I, I can't be, I can't be a pastor. But the fact is, it's the Lord who places. You know, it's not something that one takes upon oneself and say, okay, I want to be this. Right? Yes, we desire uh, and we see how the Lord is working in each one of us. We desire the gift and, uh, but the Lord ultimately, you know, he gives the gift mix and he also, you know, plants us, places us and, um, and releases us, right? According to human logic, we would say, Paul, I think you're a great man. You're, uh, you know, well-read. You, would, you should go to the Jews. And uh, Peter, you're a fisherman, you're a businessman, you've met, met all kinds of people. I think you should go to the, you know, the Gentiles and uh, you're pretty down to earth, impulsive, you'll, you'll work better there. But the fact is that the Lord called, um, you know, uh, Peter to the Jews and Paul to the, to the Gentiles. So we see the Lord working in different ways so that the glory goes to him 
that no man can boast in his or her oh. or no person can boast in his or her own strength right so we see this um you know one instance that happened in 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 our uh, in as i was growing up and uh, i was in the you know in a youth group where i met the lord and and in that youth group we we had you know different kinds of people different ages um, uh, different levels of maturity and i remember one particular conversation that we had because we had we had just finished i think an, an outreach of sorts where we would go you know um sing songs um somebody would share a testimony there would be a choreography um there would be a skit and there'd be a message and uh, you know some you know the typical you know a standard um you know uh, one of those meetings that we we had so that is all we knew that's all we did so we finished that and then uh, i remember one of the one of the one of our friends saying that he i don't think we should be you know doing this you know we're going to the Uh, we're in the same location i think we should go out we should go to other places and people where places where the gospel is not heard and then and do that right and um, and and everyone was like yeah we should and uh, but i i couldn't help thinking you know uh, is there you know what if people were called to do this in a certain place yes, yes definitely you know that that is something that we need to do but what if people were cl- called um, to the, to something else right and um, yeah so so we see that um, uh, we when we understand the ministry gift how the lord plays us and how the lord you know um uh, or uses uh, each of these for uh, in his kingdom then we will get uh, a better understanding we will we will uh, appreciate and honor you know each of these ministry gifts because they come from the lord we will not compare um we will not uh, you know uh, put down uh, one and elevate another we will not do that and uh, we would appreciate right, the different gift mix the way in which god ministers um and the way in which the ministers themselves uh, serve uh, according to the revelation the the anointing that is upon them right okay so we read about um so that was just as you know uh, just an aside so next we read about philip right philip we see that um, philip is the only one who's actually uh, you know called the evangelist of course the uh, paul writes to timothy and says uh, do the work of an evangelist um, but really uh, philip is the only one who's called who's referred to by this title right he's called the evangelist and uh, when we look at uh, philip uh, let's just read through you know the philip's ministry and what he did okay so we read about philip in acts chapter 6 okay acts chapter 6 is where uh, philip makes an entry and um, um let's uh, if you have your bible just turn to acts chapter 6 we're going to you know read a, read through a few verses um now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying there arose a complaint against the hebrews by the hellenists because their widows were neglected in the um daily distribution um hellenists were greek speaking jews um then the 12 summoned the multitude of the disciples okay so there's a big group now the 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 12 were uh, you know the apostles who were apostles of the lamb so they they summoned the multitude of the disciples and said it is not desirable that we leave the word of god and serve tables therefore brethren seek out from among you seven men of good reputation full of the holy spirit and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word okay and um, the saying pleased the saying pleased the whole multitude and they chose and the names of the one the uh, ones who were chosen uh, were, uh, are referred here are, are recorded here and they chose stephen a man full of faith and the holy spirit and philip prochorus nicanor timon parmenas and nicholas a proselyte from antioch okay so uh, whom they set before the apostles and when they had prayed they laid hands on them then the word of god spread and and so on Uh, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith wow. awesome so we see uh, philip being mentioned here and so they chose philip because of certain um, certain characteristics they uh, because this the apostles felt that uh, this job required this 
these characteristics and again very unusual right it's it's, it's you would say okay uh, someone who is uh, probably strong someone who uh, you know uh, who was um, easy going who's able to pro- solve problems you know but the fact is that a person who's full of faith and the holy spirit uh, and wisdom you know that is what they were looking at good reputation and uh, when you have a good reputation and when you're full of the holy spirit and wisdom then you then everything else you know comes with it right so they went to the basic thing uh, rather than you know looking at this and that they they just went to the the one thing which covers everything so they said they said a good reputation full of the holy spirit and wisdom so uh, full of the holy spirit meaning you know um uh, a person who is uh, anointed uh, and there's power of god working in their lives and of course the, there's wisdom as well the ability to use the knowledge and also people of good reputation so they were of people of character okay so they chose so we we know that philip was such a person okay because he was chosen uh, for this particular task okay then uh, when we read uh, we we read through uh you know some of the verses in chapter 7 acts chapter 7 right it talks about stephen the message that he shared and uh and how he was martyred towards the end of the message right um we didn't really look uh, too much into that but uh, we see in verse 58 they actually cast stones they threw stones at him and uh, um and then killed him so he was death by stoning uh probably a hor- yes definitely a horrible way to die um but he was the first martyr and uh, and Saul also is mentioned there Saul who became Paul Saul is also mentioned there right so after the death of Stephen it is recorded that there was uh, there was immense persecution of the church in Jerusalem right immense uh, intense persecution and uh, so it it says in chapter 8 and verse 3 acts chapter 8 and verse 3 that Saul as for Saul he made havoc of the church right he he it was um, intense persecution he and Paul, Saul himself was spearheading this whole mission of persecution he made havoc of the church entering every house dragging off men and women committing them to put prison so you know families so everything uh, there there was so much of uh, chaos uh, people were being imprisoned for following jesus and, uh, and this was happening right well, cha- verse 4 therefore those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word okay now that's an amazing verse <laughs> that's that's a really amazing verse and inspiring verse okay it talks about persecution the verse before that talks about persecution there's so much of confusion uh, people you know we don't know whether they saw each other again because families would have been i don't know separated you know it says men and women were put in prison and we don't know for how long all that is happening verse 4 those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word so they they were obviously running away from this persecution running away from Saul and his team who were hunting people down they ran away from Jer- Jerusalem they were going to wherever you know they wherever they could find safety and they went everywhere preaching the word now you know that's that's an amazing verse and if you look at it you know here they were probably carrying on their backs whatever they could you know belongings personal belongings they could take and whatever um whatever they could manage right to live whatever you know they were running for their lives you know virtually running for their lives and they went everywhere preaching the word right they were preaching the word they were talking about jesus um they were talking about you know their own life story you know how their lives were touched how their lives were changed and they're talking about the love of god talking about uh, preaching the gospel okay so this is what we see verse 5 then philip went down to the city of samaria and preached christ to them okay so philip was also part of that group which was leaving uh, jerusalem going on to other places and as they went they preached so philip is mentioned here he went to samaria and he preached the word 
um, preached Christ to them. So it specifically says, and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Hearing. So he, he shared the message. Right? Uh, he's going from Jerusalem, went on to Samaria, shared the message. So they heard the message. They also saw the work of God through his hands and through his ministry, hearing and seeing the miraculous things, right? Miraculous, the miracles which he did. Verse 7, for unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed, and there was great joy in that city. Okay. So so this is what we um this is what we see about uh Philip, so he was a man full of the Holy Spirit. He was a man of reputation. He was, uh, um, you know, he was uh, filled with the spirit and wisdom and so on. Um, after the persecution, he goes from Jerusalem to Samaria. And in Samaria, preaches the gospel. And people turn to Jesus. It says multitudes, we don't know how many. They turn to Jesus. Um, and unclean spirits come out, there was great deliverance, they were, they were uh, you know, um, healing of a great nature because pa those who were paralyzed and lame were healed and there was great joy in that city. So this is um, this is something that we see about Philip. So so you can imagine there's, there's amazing things happening in, uh, in Samaria. Okay. Um, the, uh, it says the entire, there was great joy in the city because uh, uh, the powers of the Evil spirits were broken. They were, you know, people were delivered, and uh, whatever oppression was there, you now they were delivered of it, and there was great joy. Um, then in nine, we, uh, nine onwards, we talk, we read about Simon the sorcerer who was there, and uh, and about uh, also the um, about uh, Peter and uh, Peter and John. Uh, Jerusalem hears about this, and Peter and John come here to Samaria, and they pray over the people, and they receive. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to look uh, at this in detail in a later chapter. Um, I mean, sorry, um, uh, 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 about uh, I think we looked at it, you know, uh, in the first year in the Holy Spirit class when we looked at the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Sorry, I was just suddenly I lost track. But um, yeah, so this is what we uh, we read, and we see something uh, um, again amazing happening. That um, uh, 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 towards uh, uh, when we read verse twenty-six. Okay, so this revival in Samaria, people are you know, and Philip is used of God in this manner. So he goes, preaches, passionate about Christ. People want you know need to know Jesus. Preaches, uh, people are getting saved. Now, the church is getting filled. Right. This is what is happening. Now, the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to De Des uh, Gaza. This is desert. Okay. This is uh, uninhabited, an uninhabited, uninhabited place or a deserted place. Uh, and you look at the, the meaning uh, of that word there. Um, and so he goes there. Okay. So that's, that is what we um, see uh, next that he from this place where there's revival, he's sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit, and then he goes to this place, um, uh, to Gaza, and in this specific place where there are no people. So a lot of people, a lot of joy, to a place where there are no people, and uh, but he obeys the voice of the Spirit, right? And there, he shares with um, uh, the, the Ethiopian official. So let's read that. Verse 27. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge over all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him. And heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in scripture 
which he read was, and he was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a lamb, uh, led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth? So the so eunuch asked, answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water and the eunuch, and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? So obviously, Philip had shared uh, from that place, you know, about Christ, how he was the lamb that was slain, uh, about his uh, death on the cross, about his burial, about his resurrection, and uh, and also the the commissioning you know, part that um, uh, where the Lord says you go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. So he obviously had shared all that with uh, this Ethiopian eunuch. So. After Philip shares, he says, you know, here's water. What stops me? You know, what should stop me from being baptized? And so he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. So everything, altar call, baptism, everything is over, right, in that one, um, in that one mes uh, message. Shares the gospel, starting from the book of Isaiah, that particular verse, and uh, and. He, the person obviously has opened his heart, is responsive to the gospel, and he says, you know, I want to be baptized and gets baptized. Okay, so this is uh, uh, this is what we read about uh, uh, Philip again. And, uh, and then um, we see that um, when they came out of the water, something supernatural happens, right? So here's a man, uh, Philip, who's... Uh, sharing the gospel so passionate doesn't mind even if he's persecuted he doesn't mind even if he's running for his lives uh, for his life but he's sharing the gospel sensitive to the voice of the spirit doesn't matter doesn't matter you know whether there is one or ten or ten thousand but he will share the gospel right uh, so we, we we are learning all this you know from the life of the one who, whom they call the evangelist so um, so he's sensitive to the spirit and he's going he's sharing and uh, and he's uh, you know he's whether it's one or you know many, it doesn't matter. So he's sharing. So here's the fruitfulness of a life that is so sensitive to the work of the Spirit, right? So we see that he shares, the person gets saved. Then we see something. We see the supernatural uh, happening in his life. You know, when he came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, just like how we read about Elijah and uh, you, know, you know that instance where Obadiah comes and uh, you speaks to him, saying, you know, uh, and Elijah gives him a message uh, to go and take back that message to Ahab. So uh, Obadiah says, you know, you know, this is if I go and say I, you know, Elijah, I saw Elijah and uh, you know he wants to meet you, then I bring Ahab here. King Ahab, and uh, you know, uh, and everything is like uh, it's, it's all pretty scary there because uh, just before that there had been a massacre of the prophets in the land. So uh, saying, you know, the king will get very upset, you know, because I'll bring him here, and the spirit of God would have taken you somewhere. Okay, so obviously they it was common knowledge that such things were happening, and here um, again, here we see this. It says. Um, the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Right? Samaria, great joy in the city. Here, eunuch, he's received Jesus, he's baptized, and he goes on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found as Azotus. He's found in another place, and passing through, as was his way in manner, he preached in all cities till he came to Caesarea, okay, which is... Um, uh, one of the port cities or uh, coastal cities. He, came, he comes to Caesarea, um, which is by the Mediterranean Sea, and um, it says that he came to Caesarea. Okay, so um, we, we we see this, uh, and we and we read that verse that we read earlier, where another place where Philip is mentioned is in uh, Acts chapter twenty-one and verse uh, eight. Right, so we see that 
he's in a house. He's obviously, uh, you know, uh, Acts chapter 8, we see that they were all young men. And now, obviously, he is, uh, you know, he's older. He's got four daughters and all of them, he had passed on something to them as well, right? And all of them were prophesying, right? And uh, and so on. So, um, so this is what we see um, about Philip. Okay. So we'll take a quick break and then we'll come back and continue with the class. Okay. Thank you.